Amen. Praise God. Good to see your lovely faces. Amen. You know, I, I want to just share, amen, praise God. We went to a funeral. Uh, dear brother of mine in the Lord lost his daughter, amen, last Saturday. Amen. Praise God. And, um, she, amen, praise God, you know, she took her life, amen. And uh, brother in the Lord, amen, but we were talking and amen, and he we were fellowshipping and we was talking about isolation. And he said, I don't know why, I don't know how, brother, we don't understand. This girl was raised in church, uh, sweet as can be, amen, but she found a time, there was a place where she was all alone. And, he, and the word isolation, he said isolation, and I was like, that word would not leave me all week, brother, you know, when it happened, amen. And, and one thing God began to show me, amen, is that before we get into scripture, that the devil, as a roaring lion, walketh about seeking whom he may devour. Somebody say amen. amen. And God began to deal with me, amen, praise God, about how the enemy, amen, praise God, if we're not careful, amen, he wants to isolate you. Somebody say amen. amen. And God began to deal with me, amen, about the assembling of ourselves together, the importance of coming together. Amen. amen. And so, amen, he led me to Hebrews, amen, to talk about coming together, amen. amen. Because even in this text we're about to read, they were going through some tribulation, amen, and some trials. And how I many of you know tough things are going to come in your life? But when trials and tribulation come, it's not a time to isolate yourself. Amen. Somebody say amen. amen. Because the devil operates in isolation. Come on, somebody. Amen. He wants to separate you from the flock. Come on, somebody. A flock is a, a, is a multitude of people. Come on. A flock is a number of people. Not sheep, but flock is more than one sheep. Somebody say amen. But the enemy wants to separate you from the flock. And when he separates you from the flock, we call that isolation. Come on. Or forsaking, or, or, or forsaking the assembly. Yes, amen. Right. Somebody say amen. amen. And too many of us, too many of us, and I say us because Christians, somebody say amen. Anytime you talk about the church, you want to include yourself because you're no better than the one that falls. Somebody say amen. amen. So many of times we, amen, go astray, amen, from the church, amen, and that is an opportunity for the enemy. Yes, amen. amen. Come on, somebody. Because he wants to, just like he does, like a lion, he wants to get you away, isolate you, suffocate you. Mm -hmm. If you watch a lion, a lion, before he does anything, he isolates his prey, the weak one. Somebody say amen. amen. Then when he catches him, the first thing he go for is the throat. Right. When he catches him, come on somebody. He's, he, his next target is the throat. Why? Because that's where life is at. Come on, somebody. But he want to isolate you first. Then suffocate you. And that represents life. He wants to get the life. He wants to take life from you. Yes. Not, you might not be physically dead, but you might be spiritually sick. Come on, somebody. He wants to suck the life out of you. Then he devours And that all comes from separation. Somebody say amen. Let me go to scripture. Hebrews. Chapter 10. Hebrews chapter 10. Verse 
verse 23. We there? Let us hold fast to the profession of our faith without wavering or be, being unmoved or standing firm. Amen? God wants us to be firm in our profession. Somebody say amen. So God don't want us to waver. Somebody say amen. How many know the Lord wants you to be unmoved? Come on, somebody. So we need to be unmoved. Amen. Praise God. Tell your neighbor you need to be unmoved. You need to be firm. Without wavering, this without wavering, for he is faithful that promised. Somebody say, now we know God is faithful. Amen. Let us consider one another to provoke unto love and to good works, not forsaking the assembling of ourselves together as the manner of some is, but exhorting one another as so much as the more as ye see the day approaching. May the Lord add a blessing to the readers and hearers and doers of his word. And God, all God should say, amen. 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 24 verse 24 said, and consider one another. In other words, amen. He, all these three verses, 23, 24, 25, go along with each other. Amen. Praise God. I like how that is set up right there. He said, let us hold fast, us together. Amen. Praise God to the profession of our faith together, without wavering together. Amen. Somebody say amen. Uh, for he is faithful that promise. And let us consider one another. In other words, that word consider means to fix one eyes upon. Somebody say amen. amen. So, amen, when we come together, my eyes, amen, need to be fixed upon somebody else. Somebody said, my, my, I, I need to be attentive to my brothers and sisters. Come on, somebody. Amen. When we come together, your eyes should be fixed on one another, and we should be attentive to one another. Somebody say amen. Because you never know what someone is going to, through. How can you know someone is going through something if you're not attentive to them? Come on. If your eyes are not fixed on them. Somebody say amen. And if you're not in the church, how can one fix their eyes on you? Somebody say amen. The enemy wants to isolate you, amen, so he, amen, praise God, can suffocate you. Let me say this. Let me say it like this. The devil, amen, suicide is of the devil. Yes, yes, it is. Yes, it is. <laughs> and people say, that can never happen to me. But don't you know your trouble can get so hard? See, he, look at this pattern. Where did Jesus go before he tempted him with suicide? He tempted you. Cast yourself yes, yes. down. Yes, yes. Come on, somebody. He isolated. He was, the spirit led him into the wilderness. Amen. It was the spirit that led him, but the devil saw isolation and opportunity. And Jesus, the scripture said, was tempted in every area. In Hebrews. Said he was tempted in every area yet without sin. Yes, yes. So he was even tempted with suicide. Mm -hmm. Where? In the wilderness. Mm -hmm. If thou be the son of God, cast yourself down. Mm -hmm. Come on somebody. Mm -hmm. He wants to isolate you to tempt you with that. Somebody say man. Mm -hmm. He wants to isolate you to torment you. He wants to isolate you to afflict you. Don't you know your mind is the biggest battleground? Yes. So I say, man, and he wants to isolate you. A uh, idle mind is the devil's playground. He wants to isolate you to afflict your mind. That's right. And if you don't have anyone attentive to you, fixed on you, how can you get help? Mm -hmm. I'm going to keep going watch this. I'm going to go somewhere. I'm going to qualify everything that I'm saying. Amen. He said, fixed upon one another unto love and he said fix upon one another or consider one another to provoke or to urge on to arouse or encourage I need to be my eyes need to be fixed on you sister Raquel to be attentive to you in case something's going on with you so I can encourage you or urge you to keep going on yes. come on somebody yes. but if you're not in the assembly assembly means that
Oh, somebody help me. That's why you cannot forsake the assembling of yourselves together. Oh, somebody help me. Is this making any sense to you? And a lot of times, amen, the enemy, I mean, if you've been in church long as I have, and I ain't been in church that long, but if you've been in church long as me, you've seen people come to church and you don't see them anymore. Then they find themselves isolated. Next time you see them, they're coming out of the liquor store. Come on, somebody. Because they wasn't in a place to be. We all need encouragement. Yes. Yes. Somebody say amen. Yes. We all need. If the Lord said forsake, not in the forsake means don't abandon the assembly. Forsake means abandon. Don't abandon the church. Come on, somebody. You need church. If you don't think you, Jesus said, when two or three are gathered together in my name. Somebody say amen. God is with you, but you need your problem. Somebody say amen. We need to assemble together. Watch this. He said unto love and to good works, not forsaking the assembling of yourselves together as the manner of some is, but exhort one another as so much the more as you see the day approaching. Amen. Come with me to Ecclesiastics. So your eyes need to be fixed on me. My eyes need to be fixed on you. Amen. Your eyes need to be fixed on your brothers. Come on, somebody. Yes. I, I just want to say this. Because let me tell you something. Trouble going to come. I thank God I had. An elder Paul in my life these last five years. I thank God I had an evangelist Brian in my life. Come on, somebody. These last five years. I thank God for my sister. I thank God, amen, for a deacon deep. Come on, somebody. Amen. Because, amen, in my roughest and hardest time, come on, somebody, they were fixed on me. Yeah. They were attentive to me. Yeah. Come on, somebody. And when they and they came and they exhorted me. Come on, somebody. Somebody say amen. amen. Not only do I need to be attentive to you and, 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 and considering your, you know, what you're going through, I also need to speak to you. Yes. Speaking to you, to encourage you, to excite you. Somebody say amen. 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 Ephesians. Oh, I'm sorry. Ecclesiastes. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, sis. Attentive. She's attentive. She, she's, her eyes fixed on it. She fixed on it. Ecclesiastes chapter 4. Oh, oh boy, this is going to be good. Hey, man, watch this. Ecclesiastes chapter 4. Verse 9. When you're there, say amen. amen. Two are better than who? One. Because they have a good reward for their labor. That word good, another word for that good is agreeable. Amen. Two are better than one because they have a good reward for their labor. If we're laboring together, we should be in agreement. Come on, somebody. And if we're in agreement and we're laboring together, we have a good reward. Come on, somebody. But he said two are better than one for if they fall, one will lift up his fellow. But woe. I went and looked at this word woe and it says, but woe to him that is alone when he falleth. For he hath not another to help him. Amen. Somebody say amen. amen. So if, the, the, like I said, the devil wants to isolate you for the fall. Amen. And if you fall isolated, woe unto you, what the scriptures say. Yeah. Watch this. It's that word woe means deep distress or misery, affliction, alas. Expression of sorrow, regard, compassion, or alarm. In other words, he said distress will come. Distress will come. But he said woe to you when you're alone when it do come. Come on, somebody help me. Come on. 
I'm gonna show you how the devil play with you. I'm gonna show you because we're gonna go from here to Elijah. Nobody in this room, including me, can walk this walk alone. God has not ordained you to do that. Jesus didn't even walk alone. Jesus did not walk alone. No one is ordained to walk alone. Somebody say amen. amen. We have each, he said, woe unto you when you fall and you by yourself. Because you don't have nobody fixed on you, attentive to you, to help you get up. Come on, somebody. But you do got somebody to torment you. Somebody say amen. amen. So when you're alone, watch this. It says fall, it says, woe to you, him, that is alone when he falleth, for he have not another to pick, help him up or give him aid. But falleth means to be cast down, to fall into the hand of something. To fall off a violent death or fall away. He said when you alone, if you fall, amen, if you alone and fall, woe unto you. Somebody say amen. amen. The steps of a good man are ordered by God. Amen. Though he fall, he shall not be utterly cast down, for God uphold him. God will uphold him with his hand. Guess who that hand is? Your brother. Yeah. Man. Helping you. Come on, somebody. Yes, the steps of a good man are ordered by God, and God not ordering you away from the assembly. Amen. That's right. Because though he fall, somebody eyes is fixed on him. Somebody eyes is attentive to him to help him get back up. Somebody say amen. 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 And many times the devil try to, the devil use accusations and he use things in the church that they don't want you here. They don't want you around. You're not accepted there. He wants to isolate you to torment you even more. They don't want you around. Oh, you see how she look at you? You see how he look at you? That ain't nothing but the devil playing with your mind. Come on somebody. Just to isolate you like a lion to you and devour you. He said, well, if I keep them, if they stay around the flock, they'll be encouraged. Yeah. But I got to get them away from the flock. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Somebody say amen. amen. Every time I come to church, I'm looking for a word of encouragement. Amen. Come on, somebody. Amen. Because the assembling together, amen, is, is you anointed by yourself, but there's something about the corporate anointing. Yes. Yes. Come on, somebody. Right. You might not have to get the prophecy and you need a word Somebody. Yeah. You might need healing in your body, and the manifestation of healing is in Sister Rakia, but guess what? You stay home. Uh -huh. Come on. Come on. Right. Right. So I say, man. And that word that, watch this, that word that you needed, you missed. Yes. And now the enemy attacks you even more. Come on, somebody. Amen. Watch this. God ain't made us. To be alone. I don't care how much you know the word. I don't care how anointed you think you are. Yeah. You're going to struggle alone. Yes, it's true. Yes, it's true. Come on, somebody. You're going to struggle alone. And we have to be attentive to one another. Come on, somebody. And we have to keep our eyes fixed on one another. Come on, somebody. To make sure that we are in line and make sure that we're on track. Yeah. Come on, somebody. Yeah. Because if you fall alone, the scripture says, Woe, woe unto him when he falls, because there's no one there to give him aid. Yeah. Come on, somebody. Yeah. And you wonder why assembling together is so important. Somebody help me. Yeah. I'm going to show you something. Watch this. And one prevent, watch this. And again, two, if two lie together, they have heat. But how can one be warm alone? And what that is saying is, how can you be comforted by yourself? I know you got the Holy Ghost to comfort you, but you still need your brothers to bear each other burdens. Let me tell you something. I had the, I have the Holy Ghost, and what I just came out of, I needed more than just that Amen. to get through what I 
I went through. Somebody say amen. Praise God for the, but I needed somebody to touch and agree with me. Yeah. Somebody say amen. I needed somebody to encourage me. I need somebody to say, Pastor, you can make it. Keep on preaching. Oh man, God is using you. Thank you for ministering to me. Man, I need a word of encouragement. How many of you need an encouragement sometimes just to keep on going? Amen. Somebody say amen. Single mothers, you need a word of encouragement sometimes. Yeah, I've been where you've been. Come on, I can relate to you because I've done it. Somebody say amen. So you need a word of encouragement. Sometimes you might just lose your man. I can't deal with this no more. Yeah. I, I'm so tired of this mess. Uh, man, I'm just leaving. I can't take it no more. And the kids don't know what's wrong with you. You just done lost your mind. Come on, somebody. You woke up one day. I ain't doing no laundry. I ain't cooking. I ain't cleaning. I ain't doing nothing. I'm just tired. Come with me to, let me find it first. I didn't, I didn't, 
I wasn't going to go there, but I'm going to go there now. See, being by yourself, come to 2 Samuel chapter 11. I want to give you, I want to, I'm not going to, we're going to read about David, but it's revelation out of this scene right here, amen? amen. It's revelation out of this. Chapter 11, and it came to pass after the year was expired, at the time when kings go forth to battle, that David sent Joab. Was David the king? Amen. David was the king, right? Yes. But he sent who? Joab. And his servant with him. And all of Israel, and they destroyed the children of Amnon, Ammon, and besieged Rabbah. But David tarried in Jerusalem. Still, 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 David tarried still at Jerusalem. Now David was the king, right? Mm -hmm. They went forth to battle. David should have been in the battle, but David stayed at home alone. Mm -hmm. okay. David was in the wrong place. Come on, somebody. At the wrong time when he should have been gathered together with the folks. Yes, amen. Somebody help me. Amen. It said the kings was supposed to go to battle. The king was supposed to go to battle, but he sent Joab to go to battle, and he stayed at home. And he comes out on his balcony. Come on, somebody. He looks out on his balcony and see Bathsheba. Come on, somebody. See, what if he would have been in church? What if he would have been in the fight with the brothers? Come on, somebody. What if he would have been in the battle? Would he ever have felt into this Bathsheba incident? No. Come on, somebody. Amen. He sent Joab them to the battle when he should have been in the battle with him. Mm -hmm. And he was at home alone. Isolated and saw this woman who was married fell into adultery manipulated Uriah had him killed got him drunk and then because he did because he wasn't assembled together Nathan came to him and said, the sword is not, because you did this. The child, she got pregnant. The child is going to die. Come on, somebody. Come on, somebody. He said, the sword will never depart your house. What if he would have been assembled with the brothers? Yes. Get, get the revelation behind that. Yeah. What if he would have been assembled with the brethren? Come on, somebody. Amen. And he was the king supposed to be with the brothers. But he took it upon himself to stay at home and fell into adultery. Come on, somebody. Oh, y'all better help me up in this place. You know, we, 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 we had a, you know, we had a, one time we was talking about the doctrine of Christ. You know, we folks would stay home and come back. We, it was a series, you know. We took a test at the end and, you know, folk come in. Man, what in the world are they talking about? See, when you don't, for, when you forsake the sin, you, you don't get, you don't get taught nothing. Come on, somebody. You need, come on, God is ordained teachers. Come on, somebody. Amen. And, and, and we were teaching on the doctrine of Christ. Took a test. Folk, you know, folk took it and some folk were like, man, I ain't taking that. Some folk were like, man, you know, I, I, come on, somebody. But we taught it. It was, it was here. It was available. The information was available. But what was you doing when the information was being presented? So many Christians get converted to other religions because they forsake the assembly. Come on, somebody. David was supposed to be at war. But he was isolated. He was isolated. And then God dropped. I want y'all to go read this about this. Elijah. Let's go to Elijah. I 
I was here before. This, I was in this place. Let me see where I want to start at. Hallelujah. For the sake of, I don't want to read all this. Amen. I, I want to just show you something. Amen. Praise God. Come with me to 1 Kings. Chapter 18. And this is Elijah. Amen. Y'all, if y'all read this story, Elijah, the children of Israel had forsook the Lord. And Elijah comes, Ahab comes, and he tells Ahab to go get all of Jezebel prophets, 400 prophets. He said, go get all her prophets. Amen. And, and get the children of Israel. Amen. Praise God. Prophets of Baal. He said, and you get the children of Israel. And we, did, you know, he told the children, why hawk you between two opinions? We finna find out today who God is. Come on, somebody. If God is God, then you follow him. And bow, we bow. Follow him. Don't, 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 don't be double-minded. Follow either God or follow the devil. Come on, somebody. That's what he was saying. We gonna find out who God. But, I, but, but my focus is not on that. Watch this. Let's go, let's start at verse, verse 12. This is, this is Elijah's talking. And it shall come to pass, as soon as I have gone from thee, the Spirit of the Lord, um, excuse me, this is Obadiah talking. The Spirit of the Lord shall come and carry thee whither I know not. And so when I come and tell Ahab, he cannot find thee. Ahab sent Obadiah to go get Elijah. And so Elijah, Obadiah is speaking to Elijah. And here's what he says. He says, and he cannot find thee. He shall slay thee. But I, thy servant, fear the Lord from my youth. Was it not told my Lord what I did when Jezebel slew the prophets of the Lord? How I hid a hundred men of, of the Lord prophets by fifty in, in a cave and fed them with bread and water. And now thou said, go tell thy Lord, behold, Elijah is here, and he shall slay me. And Elijah said, as the Lord of hosts liveth, before whom I stand, I will surely show myself unto him today. So Obadiah went and met Ahab, went to meet Ahab and told him, and Ahab went to meet Elijah. Amen. And it came to pass, when Ahab saw Elijah, that Ahab said unto him, Art thou he that troubleth Israel? And he said, I have not troubled Israel, but thou and thy father's house, in that ye have forsaken the commandments of the Lord, and thou hast followed Balaam. Now therefore send and gather all Israel unto Mount Carmel, and the prophets of Baal, 450. And the prophets of the groves, 400, with, which eat at Jezebel table. Y'all see this? So Elijah said, go get the prophets. Right here. So, so Ahab sent unto all the children of Israel, gathered the prophets together unto Mount Carmel. And Elijah came unto all the people and said, how long halt ye between two opinions? If the Lord be God, follow him. But if Baal be, but if Baal then follow him. And the people answered him not a word. Then Elijah said unto the people, I, even I only remain a prophet of the Lord, but Baal's prophets, 450 men. Elijah said he was alone, didn't he? Yeah. He said, I am alone. Y'all with me? Mm -hmm. now, now Elijah, amen, praise God, in verse Seven, in chapter 17 of Kings, keep your finger right there. It says, And Elijah the Tishbit, who was of the inhabitants of Gilead, said to Ahab, As the Lord God liveth, before whom I stand, therefore there shall not be due rain these years, but according to my word. So Elijah stood before the Lord. And Elijah said he was alone. Y'all with me? Yeah. He said, I'm alone. Now he goes on, he said, amen, praise God. 
Jump down to 27. So he said, whoever God answered by these sacrifices, he, he wanted, he wanted, amen, the 400 prophets, he wanted the, 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 the prophets of Baal to offer up a sacrifice, and he was going to offer up a sacrifice, and he said, whoever God answered by fire, let him be God. Amen? Y'all with me? Amen. So in 27, it says, and it came to pass at noon that Elijah mocked them, saying, cry loud, for he is a God. Either he is talking or he is pursuing. Or he is, or he is in a journey, or a pre adventure. He's sleeping and must be awakened. He's he's mocking them. He's, they got an ass in them. They cutting themselves and they doing all kind of stuff. Blood gushing out of them, and they God still not answering them. Amen. Y'all with me? And they cried aloud, cut themselves after all manner, after their manner with knives and legends, till the blood gushed out upon them. Y'all see that? That's sick. The devil, look how the devil influenced people. And it came to pass when midday was past that they prophesied until the time of the offering and the evening sacrifice, and there was neither voice nor any answer nor any that regard. And Elijah said unto all the people, Come near unto me. And all the people came near to him, and he repaired the altar of the Lord that was broken down. And Elijah took 12 stones according to the number of the tribes of the sons of Jacob unto whom the word of the Lord came saying, Israel shall be thy name. And, and with the stones he built an altar in the name of the Lord. And he made a trench about the altar as, a great, as great as as would contain two measures of seed. And he put the wood in order and cut the bullock in pieces. Man, so much word in all this, but I'm trying to get somewhere and laid him on the wood and said, fill four barrels with water and pour it on the burnt sacrifice and on the wood. And he said, do it the second time. They did it the second time. He said, do it the third time. They did it the third time. And the water ran round about the altar and he filled the trench also with water. And it came to pass at the time of the offering of the evening sacrifice, Elijah the prophet came near and said, Lord God of Abraham, Isaac and of Israel, let it be known this day that thou art God in Israel, and that I am thy servant, and that I have done all these things at thy word. Hear me, O Lord, hear me, that this people may know that thou art the Lord God, and that thou hast turned their hearts back again. Then fire the Lord fell, and consumed the burnt sacrifice, and the wood, and the stones, and the dust, and licked up the water that was in the trench. And when all the people saw it, they fell on their faces and they said, the Lord, he is God. The Lord, he is God. And Elijah said unto them, take the prophets of Baal and not one, let not one of them escape. And they took them and Elijah broke down, brought them down to the brook of Keshon and slew them there. Y'all see that? So Elijah slew all, look at the, Elijah caused it to stop raining. Elijah raised up a widow's son when he died. Y'all with me? This man was doing mighty works. He said he was alone. Amen? Y'all remember that? He said he was alone, but look at all this work he was doing. Y'all with me? So you can do all kind of work and still be alone. He was alone. That what, what got me with the story, we're going to see. This man was doing all this work for God, yet in his mind, he, he was alone. Come on, somebody. I'm, I'm, I'm trying to show you. Don't think you can make it out there alone. We're going to see with Elijah, you can't do it alone. God can use you mightily and you still be alone. Watch this. So watch this. Watch what happened. Jump to verse 9, chapter 19. So Ahab goes to tell Jezebel. I'm going to tell Jezebel. So he go tells Jezebel in chapter 19, all that Elijah had done, and with all how he had slain all the prophets with the sword. And then Jezebel sent the messengers unto Elijah, saying, So let God do to me, and more also, if I make not thy life as the life of one of them by tomorrow about this time. 
And when he saw that he and when he saw that, he arose and went for his life. Elijah ran from the enemy. Y'all with me? He ran from the enemy and did all these works. Come on, somebody. Why? Because he didn't have no one to encourage him. Amen. He did all these mighty works and he ran for his life when the devil threatened him. So, watch this. Watch this. He ran for his life and came to Bathsheba, which belonged to Judah, and left his servant there. But he himself went a day's journey in the wilderness and came wilderness, a place up there. A place of emptiness. A place of unfruitful. A barren place. He went to the wilderness, went on a juniper tree, and told the Lord, let me die. There's a difference between him and a person that's not saved. A person not saved would have took their life. Because he, 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 watch this. I'm going to show you something. Watch this. And he lay and slept on a juniper tree. And behold, excuse me, let me read four, verse 4. But he himself went a day's journey to the wilderness and came and sat down on a juniper tree. And he requested for himself that he might die. Y'all see this? And said, it is enough now. Oh, Lord, take away my life for I am not better than my father. I've been there. Yes. If you don't think you can go there, you can, he can get you to that place. Yes. Running from the devil. See, you'll never get weary running for God, but you'll get tired running from the devil. Because he got tired. Come on, somebody. And he said, I'm by myself. Lord, just let me die. Somebody help me. <laughs> what was the key behind it? He was alone. Because he confessed it. I, I, only am I alone. Come on. But the Lord didn't tell him that. Come on. Oh, come on. See, the devil will tell you, you alone. Here this man doing all this mighty work. Amen. Come on. And when you isolated, come on. The devil will tell you, you by yourself. Come on, somebody. God using this man, and yet and still he said, I'm alone. In other words, he said, I want fellowship. I need to be encouraged. And here's the devil threatening this man, and now he's running for his life from the enemy. You only get tired when you run from the devil. Amen. Somebody help me. Because the Bible said, be not weary and well doing. You running from God, you ain't going to get weary. Amen. You might get discouraged sometimes. Amen. Somebody help me. Watch this, watch this. Now watch this. this, this, this now look. It says, as, they lay in, as he lay and slept on the juniper tree, behold, then an angel touched him. And said unto him, Arise and eat. And he looked, and behold, there was a cake baking on the coals, and a cruise of water at his head. And he did eat and drink, and laid down again, laid him down again. And the angel of the Lord touched him the second time. And, and excuse me. And the angel of the Lord came again the second time and touched him and said, Arise and eat, because the journey is too great for thee. Here he wants to die, but the Lord has said, No, I ain't done with you. Come on, somebody. Been there. He wants to die, but God ain't done with you yet. It ain't time to die. Your journey too far. You still got a lot of running to do. Come on, somebody. Now watch this. He says, and he arose and did eat, and went the, went in the strength of that meat forty days and forty nights until Horeb, the mount of God, and came thither unto the cave and lodged there. And behold, the word of the Lord came to him and said. Unto him, what doest thou here, Elijah? Now that's not, I, I came from a different perspective when I told him this before, but that word here, what the Lord is saying, what are you doing here? What are you doing here, Elijah? Huh? The devil will get you out of place. Come on, somebody. He will 
get you out of place. Come on, somebody. And the Lord will be telling you, what in the world are you doing right here? How did you get here? How did Elijah get there? Running from the devil. See, the devil run you right out of the will of God. <laughs> Come on, somebody. Because you think you're alone. He'll run you right out of the will of God and God will ask you, what are you doing here? Somebody help me. Amen. So here we here see two things going on. God didn't tell Elijah he was alone. Elijah said he was alone. <laughs> and then God asked Elijah, what are you doing here? The devil ran off. Jezebel ran that brother off. Come on. Come on, somebody. And then he got tired. Then he wanted to die. Somebody say amen. amen. Now watch this. Watch, now watch what he tell the Lord. He said, what are you doing here, Elijah? And he said, I have been very jealous for the Lord God of hosts. For the children of Israel have forsaken thy covenant, thrown down thy altars, and slain thy prophets with the sword. And even I, y'all see this? Even I only am what? Yeah. And they seek my life to take it away. He telling the Lord, I'm alone. <laughs> Is he not? Yes, right. I'm alone. God didn't tell him he was alone. Is they trying to kill me? I'm alone, Lord. And he's telling the Lord, God said, what are you doing here? He tells the Lord, why? He's there. God said, what are you doing right here, Elijah? Well, let me tell you why I'm here. I'm the only one. I'm alone. I'm running for my life. They threatening me. Somebody help me. Now watch this. And he said, go forth and sit down. I'm almost done. And stand upon, he said, go forth and stand upon the mount before the Lord. And behold, the Lord passed by and a great and strong wind ripped the mountains and break in pieces the rocks before the Lord. But the Lord was not in the wind. And after the wind, an earthquake. But the Lord was not in the earthquake. And after the earthquake, the fire. But the Lord was not in the fire. And after the fire, a still small voice. And it was so. When Elijah heard it, he wrapped his face in, a mant in his mantle and went and went out and stood in the entering in the end of the cave. And behold, there came a voice unto him and said, What doest thou here, Elijah? Now the Lord asked him, What are you doing here? Y'all with me? Here go Elijah. And he said, I have been very jealous for the Lord God of hosts because the children of Israel have forsaken thy covenant, thrown down thy altars, and slain thy prophets with the sword. And I even... I only am left, and they seek my life to take it away. He answers the Lord two things. He said, I am alone, and they seeking my life. Y'all with me? Amen. So the devil ran him right out of the will of God, and God asked him, what are you doing here? And he explains to the Lord what he's doing here. But then look what the Lord said. And the Lord said unto him, go and return. The Lord said, excuse me. Say, the Lord said, go and return. And the Lord said unto him, go, return on thy way to the wilderness of Damascus. Stop right there. The Lord told him to go return. Go back. God never dealt with the enemy. God never said nothing about Jezebel. Go back and do what you, go back. Huh? God ain't worried about Jezebel. I need to know why. What are you doing here? That's, all, that's, that's your excuse? You running for your life? And you think you're the only one? And who told you that? Did he say to Adam? Who told you you were naked? Who told you that? Who told you you were the only one? I did? God didn't tell you that? What are you doing here? Oh, Come on now. I'm alone. Somebody help me. And God didn't tell him he was alone. Who told him that? Now, are y'all 
see what I'm getting. Who told him he was alone? Who planted that seed in him he was alone? Who planted that seed in him to ask God, I want to die? Because so, God didn't say, I told you you was alone. I didn't tell you to, I didn't put that on your heart to request to me to die. Who put that on your heart? Well, y'all, y'all, come on. This suicide, man, this thing real. It's a spirit. And the devil attacks your thoughts. He wants you to think you're all alone. Come on, somebody. He said, Elijah, what are you doing? Go back. Somebody help me. I, I said all that to get to. That, that bothered me, y'all. It bothers me. And what, it, what the Lord said, we shouldn't be ignorant of Satan's devices. And the enemy wants to get you alone, to make you confess you alone. So, come on, somebody. When you're really not alone because help is at the house of God. One day I desire to When, you, when there's help in the house of God. Yes, Come on, somebody. And if you are outside the house of God, someone has driven you away. Come on, somebody. Because Jezebel drove him away. And the Lord said, what are you doing here when you're supposed to be back there? Okay. Somebody help me. Watch this. Look what the Lord tell him, though. The Lord said unto him, Go and return thy way to the wilderness of Damascus. And when thou comest, anoint Hazel, Hazel to be king over Syria. And Jehu, the son of Nimshi, shall thou anoint to be king over Israel. And Elijah, the son of Shaphat, and the son of abelam shall anoint thou shall anoint to be prophet in thy room. And it shall come to pass that him that escaped the sword of Haz Haziel shall Jehu slay. And him that escaped from the sword of Jehu shall Elijah slay. Yet I have left me 7,000 in Israel. Y'all see this? All the knees which have not bowed unto Baal. And every mouth which have not kissed him. God said, who told you that? I got 7,000 prophets. Yeah. Yeah. Are y'all with me? Yeah. Who told you you was alone? Yeah. It wasn't me because I got 7,000. If you would have came to me, I would have told you there's 7,000 prophets just like you. Y'all yeah. yeah, 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 better help me up in this place. Yeah. You're not alone. I said all that to get to this punchline. You're not Fuck God and thought he was alone. And when you think you alone, see, he thought he was alone before the devil put him on the run. Woo. I said he thought he was alone before the devil put him on the run. What if he would have knew he had seven thousand brothers? Come on. Come on. <laughs> Huh. What, if, what if he would have asked the Lord, Lord, instead of saying I'm alone, Lord, is there anybody else like me? Yes. Yeah. Come on. All you got to do is ask God to send you to a church. Lord, send me somewhere where I can be fed yes. instead of saying you're alone. Yes. Oh. <laughs> come on. Y'all better help. See, Elijah said he was alone. And because he already had this mindset that he was alone, when the devil threatened him, he got on the run. But what if he would have had 7,000 brothers by his side? Come on, somebody. 
Come on, somebody help me. But he said, I'm alone. And here this man called fire. Ain't none of y'all calling fire down from heaven. This brother called fire down from heaven. Spoke and it stopped raining. Spoke again and it started raining. Caused a young man, the widow son, to raise, raise them from the dead. And here he is ready to die. He's in a suicidal state. Yes, Lord. But he feared God enough not to take his own life. Boy, y'all better help me up in this place. Y'all better help me up in this place. He feared the Lord enough not to take his own life. But what about that person who don't know God? It's a spirit, man. Yes, it is. When they found her, she was alone. Alone. And who told her she was alone? When she had all that love for people to give her. Somebody help me. You got to come together. God told Elijah, I got 7,000 just like you. What are you doing here? Return back to where. See, we gotta watch what. Come on. I can't get this out of my spirit. We gotta watch what we're entertaining. Yes. Yes. Amen. The enemy put it on Judah's heart to betray God. Yes. To betray him. The scriptures say that. Yes. He put it on him and then he entered him. He put it on Judah's heart to betray the Lord. What do you mean? He put it in his mind. And Judas played with it. And when he sucked with the Lord, when he fellowship with the Lord, when he broke bread with the Lord, the devil entered him. That's what the scripture said. And Judas went out to a place by himself. And he hung himself. Don't play with the devil. He played with the devil and he that suicide spirit that, that's real. I'm closing with this. God, his grace is sufficient enough. I thought, man, I found myself one time mumbling. I was in such a bad place. Hell, I was in such a bad he said he was scared for me. He came out of my door. Boom. Oh. Tribulation can get that bad. Yes. Yes. Boy, y'all. Yes. God know what you can bear, though. Yes. God knew I was going to come out of that. Yes. He knew I was going to get through that. But he proves you before he uses you. Yes. Somebody say amen. Yes. He proves you before he uses you. Yes. Somebody help me. And you got to be proved to be used of God. Come on, somebody. Yes. You got to be put through the fire to be used of God. Come on, somebody, and you'll find your place where Jesus was in a wilderness, and the devil said, cast yourself down. But Jesus said, it is written. Thou said, I took the Lord, thy God. The Bible says to arm ourselves with the same mind as Christ had. Come on, somebody. You got to be armed up here. What do you need to be armed with? The word. Because he's coming. He wants to isolate God's people. Like a wolf in sheep clothing. A lion. He wants to devour God's people. And the best way to do it is to isolate you. Come on, somebody. A mighty man of God. What happened to Nobody still knows. What happened to Zachary Thames? Our brother. They found him dead. He don't, the devil don't play fair. If he can break down me, come on somebody. Oh, if I can get him. A lot of, this going to be some hurt folks. He, he, he don't, he's not, he, he don't discriminate. Somebody help me. I 
can't wait to get around my brothers. Come on, you wonder why we fellowship? Man, we always got a word of encouragement for each other. Man, how you doing? Just a hug. Some, sometimes you just need a hug. Hang in there, brother. It's going to be all right. Sometimes you need that. And all you're taking out is two hours of your day to come and fell out the week. Four hours out the week. Come on, so three hours for me in Bible study, one hour. Three hours out a whole week to come and spend some time with your brothers. Why not do that? You need that. I need that. Somebody say amen. I need that. You got the rest of your day today. You leave it here. It ain't even 12. You finna get out of here. You got the rest of your day. Amen. But you can leave here encouraged knowing that, hey man, I'm not alone. Yes. Somebody say amen. amen. I'm not alone. Amen. I'm not alone. I don't have to think I'm alone. If I feel like I'm alone, I can call one of my brothers and sisters. If I feel lonely, I can call one of my brothers and sisters just to get some fellow. Man, I just wanted to say hi. Yes. Come on, somebody. That's Christian House of Fellowship. A phone call to say hi. Hey, how you doing? Brother, we in this together. Is there anything I can do for you? You want me to pray with you? Come on, somebody. Amen. That's what it's all about. Come on, give God a hand of praise.